All right. I uh, <laughs> I'm looking in my comment section for the uh, the fight highlights I put up, and a lot, you know, it's it's, it's kind of mixed. You got some people saying that Carissa got a, a butt whooped, and you know, maybe not as nice as that, a little more explicit. Then you got other people saying, well, Carissa actually won the fight. Now, I'm going to be honest. Watching the fight live, I thought Clarissa did enough where if they would have gave her the nod, I would have accepted it. But the way the fight closed out really was what probably sealed her, her loss. But let's, let's take a closer look. And see what really happened throughout the fight. And not just what happened at the end, but the fight itself. Now one thing I found very interesting is the stand-up game from both women. I, I, I told everybody on my pre-fight breakdown that, that Montez would try Clarissa Shields standing up. And she probably did more than what most people actually caught watching the fight live. But... Clarissa definitely has more experience with, you know, as far as throwing her hands. She's a boxer. But Montez has boxing experience as well. Now, if you notice, she bobbed and weaved through a lot of that. Clarissa did land, but Montez's defense actually negated a lot of that. And Clarissa made the mistake of getting, of getting too close and allowed Montez to grab her. Instead of trying to get in and get out, like she probably would have done in boxing because she was being so aggressive and probably because of the kicks. You know, you only go have limited times to get in with your shots because she's going to try to keep you off with the kicks. She probably got a little too aggressive and wound up getting too close. Montez grabbed her. Now it's basically a tussle on the fence. And now I will say this, Clarissa did a good job, you know, a little dirty boxing, grabbing, punching while holding a little bit of knee and whatnot. Didn't allow uh, Montez to get exactly where she wanted too far as her trying to grab Carissa and, and using leverage and whatnot to throw her down. Now, here's why I thought things got a little interesting. Now, you see her try to, you know, kick Carissa's leg. Now, personally, I thought Carissa came in with a certain strategy. Whenever Mont Montez tried to sweep my leg or whatnot, or you know, shin kick or whatever you call it, I'm not an MMA guy, so please forgive me. If she could make a miss, she's she was going to try to she was going to try to counter that, you know, with her boxing. If I could get her to mix to miss, I'm going to attack her because she's open. But she kept rushing in and getting grabbed, even if she did land some shots. She would rush in too close and get grabbed. And I thought that was probably the biggest flaw in what she was trying to do. The interesting in love, she actually catches Clarissa with a pretty good shot right there at the end of the round. Now, all in all, I thought Clarissa won the round. But I did think Abigail actually landed the harder blow right there at the end. When she countered Clarissa, hit her with a nice little overhand. But I did think Clarissa did enough to win the round. I thought she controlled her on the fence, and she landed uh, more punches than Abigail did. Now, the second round started out similar to the first. Clarissa stalking her. Uh, Abigail trying to keep her off, you know, with her little feints or whatnot. And honestly, I... I thought Abigail showed more boxing IQ than what I think a lot of people expected because she didn't fall for every feint that Clarissa Shields would throw out. She actually showed a lot of poise. Now, Clarissa is about to hit her with a pretty nice shot. But once again, she didn't get in and get out. And Abigail was able to bob and weave through a lot of that. And it wound up her being grabbed. She could have popped a couple times and just stepped back. You got to recognize the fact that if things go ugly, she's going to try to grab you. She's going to grab you, and then she's going to try to get you on the ground. So that played out for a little while. I'm speeding it up just a little bit. No need to, to keep showing them just riding each other on the fence or the cage. Now, Clarissa stalking her. Now, watch this. Clarissa hits her 
with a with a really good uh, hook, but the first two punches they actually missed. Then you see Abigail counter her with a nice little knee to the to the side of the ribs. Then Abigail made sure she put some distance between her and Clarissa Shield. Now, once again, Clarissa stalking her, and you already know what's coming. She's waiting on her to miss the kick, and she's she's going to try to counteract that with basically her boxing skills. She's coming in, trying to throw the big right hand, and she actually gets countered right there. Like I tried to tell you guys before on, on, on my pre-fight breakdown, this girl actually can box. She has a boxing, wrestling, and jujitsu background. So she did some decent things with her hands against Carissa. Now Carissa tries to catch again. She slips it and hits her with a, with a, uh, with a left hand overhand. Now Carissa, she pops her with a couple jabs. So once again, Carissa stalking her. And now she overcommits with the big right hand. And this is what got her in trouble. Now, here's where things really get interesting because she put the probably the best takedown of the night. She planted Clarissa with a nice hard slam, but she didn't really get to do anything besides that. Actually, from what I see, or from my eyes, what my eyes is telling me, Clarissa probably landed more shots on her on while she was on her back than what she did on Clarissa, you know, riding her on the on the on the ground and on the fence. She didn't really have that much success, you know, with her ground and pound. She didn't have any uh, attempts to try to put Carissa in uh, any type of finishing holes, submission holes. And now here, but here's where you can see the amateur style of Carissa, because she started to attempt to put her her heels or her feet right where um, where Abigail Montez's hips are. Or, or, or upper thighs to kick her off, but she never really committed to it. She actually got one foot up, and the other one she was about to try to it, then it just looked like she just completely forgot to continue to try to put the other foot up, and she got off uh, off of that and just, you know, basically left the girl riding. But at the same time, like I said earlier, you could argue while she was riding Clarissa, Clarissa was given just as good as she got. A lot of the stuff Abby was swinging just wasn't wasn't connecting. It was hitting arms or just just getting blocked or, or missing, period. So to me, that takedown, the takedown itself, you gotta give her points for. But like I said, see, she didn't, she's not landing anything. You know, she's just riding and Clarissa's actually hitting her from the bottom, they actually spoke on it where they were saying Clarissa's doing something a lot of a lot of fighters that has uh, that has experience with doing that's trying to strike from the bottom, but she was landing shots. Rewatching the fight, I thought Clarissa did some good things from her back, and I thought Abigail didn't take complete advantage of her having Clarissa on the ground. Therefore, I felt like this round really could have went either way, especially considering Abigail actually did some decent things standing up as well. She landed a few shots. So I think both of them kind of balanced each other out a little bit. I don't think Carissa dominated her standing up as much as what people might have thought they saw. Just like I don't think Abigail dominated Carissa's bad in this round as much as what people might have thought. A lot of those were missed shots on the ground by Abigail, and some of those was missed shots by Clarissa as well, standing up, and Abigail actually caught her a few times with counters. Just like Clarissa was catching her some while she was on her back. Now we're entering into the third round, the last round, and it starts pretty much the same way the first two rounds started. Both women, you know, they're, they're trying to do the little boxing and, and put together they little kicks and whatnot, uh, establish the distance. And once she missed her kick, once again, Clarissa was coming, trying to take her head off. And um, she popped it with a, with a decent shot or two. Actually, it was probably the best 
one-two she landed all night at that point. Uh, Abigail trying to put distance between her, use her kicks or whatnot to keep Clarissa away. And uh, she's moving around and whatnot. See, those kicks are very important because <laughs> they keep distance, but Clarissa's trying her best to time them. And this third one coming up, she definitely decided to jump on that like clockwork. And uh, she's running down on her. She misses that one. But boom, she caught her right there. That's definitely the best shot of the night. She dropped her, but she didn't give herself any room to be able to hit her with, with anything besides that. And now she cracks her right there one good time. Now, what, what had me disappointed, she didn't let that right hand go when she had the chance. Especially when when uh, when Abigail was on her knee, she could have popped her a couple times. Might have even got her to let her go. Because, you know, you had to make a decision, either keep holding on or, or try to cover up. But now she's basically... Uh, back to square one wrestling on the fence and you know how that goes now at this point Clarissa's on the fence but she's not really letting uh, Abigail get underneath her and you know we fast forward a little bit Clarissa she man, she basically manhandles her backwards and uh, she gets her on the ground but briefly and Abigail gets back up Clarissa pops her a couple times in between her being down and getting up. Now, Clarissa stalking her. You should, you should almost expect the same thing. She's waiting on her to try to kick so she can pounce on her. And so far, she's had some success with that, so I don't blame her. She swung for the fences and missed. I mean, you see the pattern. Clearly, that was at least her strategy. I don't know if it was her trainers. But clearly, she came into the fight with that strategy. Once again, the Abigail actually connected that. But notice, when she kicks, that's when Clarissa lets her hands go. Now, at this point, Abigail picked up on it, saw Clarissa about to rush. Once again, nice slam. Not quite as good as the first one, but a nice slam. Now, this, this is where... Things get heavy and heated. Um, she's riding Clarissa, but so far, she's not really letting her hands go. I thought she was going to attempt to try to choke Clarissa out, but she got her arm in between her and Abigail, and Abigail begins her ground and pound. Now, she goes eventually slide Clarissa all the way to the fence. That's where we are now. And once she decided to mount on top of Clarissa, she went all in. But similar to Clarissa Shields, she got a little excited. She popped the one good time. Maybe she popped it right there. But a lot of that is missing. Maybe one right there. I think she connected right there maybe twice, three times, four times. Miss, 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 miss. I mean, a lot of that is just missing. Now, I, now, I think she popped, you no, know, she's under her arm right there, so that's not connected. Miss, miss, miss. I mean, like I said, a lot of that just wasn't missing. And if it would have, if she would have been connecting like that, the referee would have stopped it, as we saw with Claire. And it, I'm not, like, look, when Clarissa Shields stopped the, the girl she fought the first time, she wasn't landing devastating shots, but she was landing. And they stopped the fight. I think it would have been similar to Clarissa uh, being on the ground. If she would have been connecting more, they would have stopped the fight. So a lot of that was misses. In my opinion, this fight really, really could have went either way. In all three of the rounds, I thought you could make an argument for both women. So I, I had it a draw. Um, I wasn't mad that Clarissa lost. I wouldn't have been mad if she won. I really thought... The fight could have went either way, but I did think it was entertaining. Clarissa got a lot to learn, but the fact to see people keep hollering about her comp uh, comparing herself to Amanda uh, Nunes, she never did that. For people who saying that, stop it. She never said she could beat Amanda Nunes 
And matter of fact, let's play a clip. So um, um, obviously you have a, a newfound respect for, for MMA fighters. Uh, did you see the tweet that Amanda Nunes put out? Uh, the emoji, I'm pretty sure you saw it. What's your response to that? Didn't. What was it? Uh, well, it was like a, I don't know, what Barack, what do you call that emoji? It's like Basically. embarrassing, like embarrassing emoji. Oh, that, is that what that is? Yeah, so I guess she's throwing a shot. I mean, do, do, do you care to respond why, to it? So why would it be a shot at me? Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's what I thought. I that's a good point. That too. Yeah. That's what people are, I guess, assuming, and they're taking it as that. But if you're not, I mean, that, that's great. I mean, I honestly didn't even see it. Nobody made me aware. But I would just say this. Um, if the big dog is, is uh, looking at me right now, uh, she's in more trouble than what she thinks because I don't know nothing right now. You know, like, that was my first fight. And um, from, from what I saw, I'm in pretty good standing. And I, and I have a lot of potential, and I'm willing to put in the hard work to be on that level, but I haven't had a thought about fighting Amanda Nunes since I've turned in MMA because I'm signed with the PFL for three years. But if she's worried about me already, uh, that's uh, that's bad on her part, not mine, because nothing was embarrassing about my performance, about having a comeback like that. And you know, and you're saying that it's embarrassing, I want to see Amanda Nunes go in there and have a boxing match. She ain't getting embarrassed by a lot of girls. Good point. You know, so, uh, so I'm not, you know, I'm not a hater, and like I said, she's great at MMA. But for me to be going to accomplish what I accomplished in boxing, and now I'm going to MMA, that that takes a lot of heart, uh, a lot of heart and uh, courage, and then to fight in front of millions of people against a grappler. Like, if anything, she should be giving me a, a hand clap. And uh, if she thinks that boxing is easy, or if she thinks she can do what I'm doing, she stay stay a UFC world champ and then go in there and uh, become a boxing world champ and then we can have a conversation but then um, I'm not worried about uh, what she thinks or feels I'm, but I'm happy she tuned into the fight thank you <laughs> yeah she tweeted that right as the fight ended so thank you ends. thank you for purchasing <laughs> that so so as you see she wasn't she wasn't talking about She'll whoop Amanda Nunez in no MMA or nothing like that. This woman was talking about, you know, the fact that she knows she has a lot to learn. And I'm not quoting her, so please don't act like I am. But basically, for what I'm taking, she knows she has a lot to learn. She knows she's in, in her infant stage of her MMA career, uh, no matter how long it lasts. She doesn't, she's, she's not a seasoned veteran. She's not uh, delusional, thinking that she can go in there and just whoop anybody. Because I wish I could play the whole interview where she talks about, you know, the, the intricate details of fighting MMA uh, fighters and whatnot, or mixed martial arts fighters. That woman is not confused or stupid enough to think she can just go in there and whoop a great MMA fighter. She knows the people she's getting matched up with are basically, uh, they have more experience than her, but she knows that's not top of the line. She's not stupid enough to think that they're putting her in there with top shelf, uh, top shelf fighters. But the whole her versus Amanda Nunes thing started off, she was talking about boxing, boxing. The fact that people was comparing her and Amanda Nunes because Amanda Nunes was knocking women out. And she went as far as to say, you know, we can do both. We can do boxing and MMA. I know a lot of the MMA people are coming over to boxing. I'm willing to do the opposite. You know, we can do your sport first, then we can do mine. But she, but Clarissa Shields said it this a long time ago. Like, she don't expect to be nowhere near Amanda Nunez as far as even, you know, being able to be mentioned in the same breath with her, let alone put in the ring with her. It may be three or four years down the road. So this ain't something she was talking about doing immediately. But like she said, if you was to take Amanda Nunes right now without any real boxing training and put her in a boxing ring, okay, I'll put it like, cause she, she's at welterweight. In fact, she campaigned at, at, at 135 and 145 in the MMA. So with that being said, she could, she would now, if she was to fight Katie Taylor, she would be kind of tall like Adele fine pursuit.
But so she'll she'll definitely be a, a big lightweight. But do you think she will beat Katie Taylor right now? 145. So that means she will campaign that welterweight. Could she, do you think she could beat a uh, 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 Jessica McCaskill or um, hey Amanda uh, Amanda uh, Serrano? Do you think she could beat her in a boxing match? Not in an MMA, in a boxing match. I don't think so. And if she was to fight Clarissa Shields, she would be even heavier. She would be at 154, 160. I think Clarissa would be more comfortable at these weights in a boxing match, that is, than she would. Now, I will say this. Going back to the whole uh, Clarissa versus, uh, versus uh, Abigail Montez, I thought Clarissa would have been able to handle more of the ground game that Abigail Brave Montez was going to bring to the table for one reason and one reason only. And, and she did give a, she had a hard time getting Clarissa down. And that's because Abigail really fights at 135. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you a picture of her at 130, you know, when she's at her regular weight compared to what you saw. She was, she practically looked fat. Uh, fighting Clarissa compared to how she normally looks, in my opinion. So I, I thought Clarissa would have been able to dominate, or at the very least, would have been able to control her more. But as they say, uh, size and strength always come in second when it comes to technique. But at the end of the day, it was a competitive fight. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to see the two go at it again, to tell you the truth. Um, and I hope now, to be honest, which I really don't want Clarissa doing this mess. I'd rather see her box, but if she got her head set on doing it, hey, it is what it is. But I don't think she embarrassed herself. I didn't think she had that uh, that bad of an outing. She just she's still in the novice stage of the of the uh, of the sport. But all y'all out there saying she got beat down and got her, you know what, kicked and y'all exaggerating. That's just the fact that you guys hate her. Want to see her lose anyway. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure the same people saying, and not all of you, but the same people saying that, you know, was probably rooting against it anyway. But that's pretty much all I got this hair busting boxes on Fight Doc. Hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Hit me up in the comment section. Let me know what you thought about the fight. But keep it real, man. No hyperbole, no hating, you know, just, just keep it on the up and up. That's all I got this hair busting boxes on Fight Doctor. I am out.